I was working in Beckard, and at a certain time, around 1980, I jumped into something new. Steel fibers were one of the products. And in the beginning, that were only loose fibers, but that was not so easy to mix it in the concrete, and we had on the famous balling effect. And that has delayed quite, let's say, the, the, the development of the, of the use. But step by step then, Beckert has improved it by gluing the fibers together, so that we were able to consider it as just one more aggregate. Beckert was believing in that product, was believing in that market, and then, they, then I started my story. I started as a little bit everything as an engineer, as uh, climbing on the thread mixer to put the fibers into, to make, some, to make some designs, to go to universities. So, for all kinds of, of applications. But in 1990, I specialized myself in tunneling. I think I was a little bit uh, a pioneer, taking with me a lot of other, of other people, convincing them, making their, them enthusiast, because Beckard is a company of steel and was not so familiar with the construction industry. And you know, construction industry, and especially the tunneling industry, has some special characteristics. Well, when you have, uh, let's say, a, a problem in a tunnel, it, you have a standstill of, uh, uh, of two days or, or, or one month, then you have to delay your, 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 your supplies. So it's a different mentality. But, and, but fortunately, through the success, of, uh, of that new technology. Beckert believed in, in, in going on, investing uh, in, in, this, in, this uh, in this product. And so nowadays, it's, uh, steel fibers concrete has found its position. And when I retired from Beckert, then I have been asked by the University of Barcelona to be their uh, guest professor during seven years. And one of my goals was to improve also the research on fibrous concrete. And nowadays, uh, the UPC in Barcelona is one of the leading universities in research and development of fibrous concrete. From this basis, more and more applications were showing up for airport pavement, where they were able to reduce the thickness almost by 50% by reinforcing the concrete with, with fibers. So we had shotcrete uh, where the, for tunnels, but using fibers, you can follow exactly the cross-section and you can stabilize immediately because if you have to put a mesh into place, then you are losing quite some time. So you need almost three times the time for installing the wire mesh than for shot treating the same surface. And the advantage is that you can stab that you're not losing that time, that the, the rock hasn't time to decompress, but you can stabilize it immediately. Once that you see that the deformations get stabilized, then you know that the strength is okay. You have to avoid also that your concrete is just too strong, otherwise it will become brittle. To avoid this brittleness, you have to add more fibers, or fibers of a higher quality, and that's what's going on today. Because Norway has a good quality rock, that means that shot crit layer is enough to stabilize the underground. And there, they were using fibers, steel fibers, already in, at the end of the 70s, early 80s. At that time, we had not only the, uh, the introdu introduction of fibers, but we had the general concept that we have to improve the uh, quality of the shot crit, which is depending on the mix design, which is depending on the machinery, which is uh, depending also on the skill of the operators, but to keep the balance, you need also to improve the reinforcement because you need a balance between both, both materials, which are making just one, one composite. Well, when, when they are asking for such a high strength after such a short time, that means that they need maybe to stabilize the rock. The bond between the rock and the shock is much more important, in my opinion, than just the strength. Uh, and therefore, you need a clean, a clean surface, uh, you need a good accelerator. There is in fact a trend to improve the concrete quality and that makes that you, even you can reduce your thickness and because you have a stronger material that can withstand higher, higher loads, higher, higher stresses. I think it always comes back to what is the most economical solution. At the same moment, we had the development of the use of fibers also for segmental lining. There was an Italian company, Di Penta. They were making uh, some investigation into the use of fibers in segments for hydraulic tunnels. I think in '86, a first contact with Colinetti about the baggage tunnel here in London. 
And the baggage tunnel is the first project here in UK that has been, that has been using steel fiber concrete for the segments. The fact that nowadays in segmental lining, fibers are more and more used, that means that people is happy with what they have done in the past. And that also, as to durability, there is no, there is no doubt at all. So that sometimes they are, they are speaking about, yeah, these fibers may corrode, but again, as the mixed design has been designed in, in, in a proper way such that you have enough fine material to cover all the fibers, then you avoid that problem of corrosion. Of, and in fact, a fiber that should be at the surface is not contributing to the strength neither, because it's just at the surface, it has not, not so much bond to the concrete, it, it's not taking over the load from the concrete in, in, into the fiber. Nowadays, most of the specifications mention quality. Ben, ben, so it's the same like in concrete. In the concrete in the past, in, in the specification, we had a mixed design, 300 kilo cement per cubic meter. Nowadays, they specify a compressive strength. Well, for, uh, for fibrous concrete, now mostly they, they, they specify bending moment strength because, in fact, you add fibers, you add steel to the concrete to improve the, the, the bending strength, to, to improve tens tensile strength. So, when you can, when you have already, let's say, when uh, the right specification for your material, it becomes much easier to design it also. In Spain, they have already a code of practice, uh, but this code is of practice will not be accepted in Germany. Uh, you have some code of practices also here in the UK, which gives at least, at least some guidelines how to do it. You may not forget that a designer always takes the responsibility for what he's designing, and that the factor of safety is, fair, is very important. And if you are using a material you are not familiar with, well, you, are, you, you have always a tendency, let's say, you always want to increase a little bit the factor of safety in order to feel yourself comfortable. It has also to do with the fact that you have many fibers on the, on, on the, on the market with different qualities, different sizes, different anchorage, uh, different steel quality. Uh, so how to determine the, uh, the characteristics is still something, something uh, where you can have some, some improvement uh, but you may not forget that in, some, in, in all these committees, you have a part, it's an academic world, you have a part of the members who are from the industry. And always, and sometimes, to make a, a compromise between the technical elements and the economical <laughs> elements, uh, something leads to some, yeah, sometimes some strange solutions. When you have concrete and when you have steel fibers, and you put them together, and the fibers are distributed in an uniform way, fibers with a given characteristic, you should get the right performance. Because it's always important to see what's the behavior of the material. And again, steel fibers concrete is a ductile material. It's redistributing loads. If you want to test steel fibers concrete, you can do it also by taking cores, crushing them, testing the strength of the concrete, and also then taking out the number the fibers out of that of that core so that you, you can count the number of fibers and you can determine which is the amount of fibers that they have in this given place because you know that with this quality of concrete and this number of this fiber type you should you should get the strength that you that you need one of the problem is that if you take a core you have a small volume and one fiber more or less can change quite a lot the dosage that you, that, that you calculate. Uniform distribution is one of the key elements of the key issues to get a good fiber, fibers concrete. And I agree that uh, there's still something to do. So, in fact, references are the best way to convince people that you are, that you are working with quite a good technology.